Right, hello wine drinking people. Time for more of what I've had to drink yesterday and we're always happy to see our friends from the Napa Valley. Hey, Napa Valley produces just 3% of all the wine in California, but when you look at the dollars, it's like 50% of the dollars, man. Unbelievable. And it's shaped kind of like an hourglass. That's the name of our winery here. We're uh, tasted today these hourglass wines. I remember visiting their office uh, with their late great Jimmy Mans back years ago, and uh, we've been carrying them ever since. I think one of the better uh, new wines to come out of the 90s from Napa Valley, and uh, they've added a little bit to the lineup. Uh, they bought some property here, this Blue Line Vineyard, so now they've got two wines, one from the original state, one from this new vineyard, but um, everything here I mean, most excellent in quality. The Blue Line Estate Merlot 2013. And uh, this wine, uh, man, a lovely lush, plum, juicy cherry uh, Merlot. There's a little bit of Cabernet Sauvignon and Malbec in the blend. And uh, just a lovely richness. Uh, well, Bill Foley was the first winemaker here, and uh, he's known for his Merlot. He's a pride, and uh, this wine showing that lovely smooth, polished texture on the tongue, a lovely velvety uh, touch, and uh, light, nice balance and freshness. Something Merlot has, good acidity. That's the reason why it can age. It's $78 and change, an excellent example of Napa Valley Merlot. All right, the Blue Line Estate Cabernet up next. There's a little Petit Verdot and Malbec in the blend here. They get six blocks and five different clones of Cabernet, and this wine has a beautiful bouquet of dark currants, cassis berry fruit, toasty oak, dark chocolate. These 2013s need a day to open up. All of them were better the following day. I keep all my wines for two days. Let me tell you, big and chewy on the first day, still big and chewy on the second day, but uh, the tannin started to soften a little bit. These wines need a little time, but most excellent juice, everything in proportion, 125 to 125 bucks. Like I said, I mean, maybe a relative value if you put this wine in a blind tasting with uh, the best wines coming from Napa Valley, the most expensive wines, I think you'll find it can hang with all of the big boys, and that's one of the things that got this product going when they first got going. One of the retailers in Napa Valley did just that, and the wine pretty much sold out from the mailing list after that tasting, uh, just for the pe from the people in the room and the reputation of that tasting. So the Cabernet Estate 2013, this is 100% Cabernet, all the C clone, which I never heard of that. I guess it's a heritage clone. This wine's got a lovely bouquet of dark currant cherry, dark chocolate, espresso notes, a bigger and fruitier wine, lots of richness here as well. Um, still quite tannic though. This wine needs a little bit of time. Just lovely richness, lovely layers in the finish here. Most excellent juice at 217. Everybody's still 200 bucks today, man. All the marquee Cabernets, Opus One, Insignia, $100. Nope, everybody that's a marquee producer at Napa is at 200 bucks. So I guess not surprised the Hourglass wine is over 200 now. The Hourglass Estate Savion Blanc. This is my first time I've tried it because this is only the second vintage of this wine, 2014. And uh, wow, uh, a lovely, fresh, classic Napa-style Sauvignon Blanc here. Green melon figs, white grapefruit citrus, just a whiff of uh, green herb there. Bright and refreshing style on the tongue. A lot of nice tongue-tingly minerality through the finish. An excellent Napa Sauvignon Blanc. At forty-two seventy-five. that's what we had to drink with our friends from Hourglass Winery. I'm your host, Andrew Lampassoni, signing off for the Wine Watch, saying remember, always drink the good stuff first.